Hi there, I'm Rob here with today's Western Pacific weather update. Now, uh, the main topic we're going to be talking about today is our newly formed tropical storm, Aduxuri. It is currently moving off towards the northwest in the Philippine Sea, but we're also going to be touching on the rainy season stationary boundary, which is affecting Japan and China, and not to mention the fact that there is a very severe drought currently occurring in the Korean Peninsula. But first and foremost, let's talk about our newest tropical system that could be affecting Luzon here by the latter part of this week. And this is what our storm looks like on satellite imagery currently. The center of uh, circulation is right about in this area just uh, to the east of southern Luzon. It's also being called Dindo by Pagasa here. Currently, though, it is tracking just off towards the northwest, but really starting to gain that overall circulation here. Actually, you can see fairly good inflow coming in across the southern Philippines. This is going to be adding the risk of flooding here across uh, southern Visayas, even down towards Mindanao. So even though the storm is passing to your northeast, you still could be seeing some of that precipitation there due to that enhanced southwest monsoon, but also some moisture being pulled in out of the intertropical convergence zone all the way down here towards the south. On the other hand, though, it is interacting with high pressure here towards the north. That's what actually what you can see here. There's some shear lines just along the northern periphery that combined with drier influence is going to be keeping this storm relatively weak. With that said, though, I, I do think it only should make it up to about a tropical storm status, weak tropical storm status, as it continues to charge off towards the west-northwest, possibly affecting uh, northern Luzon here by the end of the week. And if we look at the official warnings from the Japan Meteorological Agency, they are also expecting the storm to rain just off the northeast coast of Luzon here. So a party, you're probably going to be getting some gusty winds and even some light storm surge could be seen as if the storm did take this exact track here, it, that counterclockwise rotation around it could pile up some light surge right in this area, that is if it does remain on this exact track. And giving the overall background flow across much of this region, I do think that is going to be a very plausible. Let's actually first look at that and we're going to take a look at some of the models. Now this is a steering current in the upper atmosphere across the western Pacific currently. And as you can see, this is where that center of circulation is for our new typhoon to tour, Dick Stuxori here, excuse me. Uh, and as it is slowly pushing off here towards the west, it's going to continue to follow this flow and at this time it does look like it could charge over northern Philippines here and then eventually churn and even affect right around Hong Kong and Taiwan into the early part of next week. Definitely still long range on that, but I do think it is going to remain on this westerly track due to this high pressure here, the West Pack High, uh, just off towards the north. It's not going to want to run through that. You always have to remember these tropical systems want to follow the path of least resistance. With that said, uh, it won't be moving into this direction eventually off here before it gets picked up by that rainy season st stationary boundary we have been talking about for all so long here. And that really could pull it off towards the north into early next week. And with that said, let's first look at the GFS model outlook on this system. Now this is a GFS model with the platform on the Florida State University's website here and it does show the storm moving over northern Luzon here by the end of the week on the 28th going through the 29th but look at these sea surface temperatures these are upwards of about 30 or above where it's currently located thus you have those very high and convective cloud tops currently occurring across much of this area once it gets off here towards uh, the, the Abashi Channel here or Luzon Strait a little bit cooler temperatures, but still exceptionally warm. Also improving conditions as far as vertical wind shear in this entire area. But let's compare this up with the European model and see what they're saying. I'm going to show this because their track is actually slightly farther towards the south. Remember the GFS came through this area. The Europeans going right here just south of Apari. Uh, the official tracks actually right here just clipping the northeastern portions of the Apari coast. So uh, with this said, these models are kind of uh, all over the place still as as the storm gets organized, or we will get a better handle on where exactly it will be going. But I do believe that anybody basically uh, from northern Luzon here, extending all the way across the Bashi Channel, even the southern portions of Taiwan, need to watch this ever so coldly as the storm continues to charge off here towards the west. And even if it doesn't make a direct landfall, you're still going to be having that heavy precipitation and the assisted southwest monsoon down here towards the south. Now, uh, I do want to show you actually some observations from over water because the storm already is showing the potential for carrying some gusty and right here you do have a ship observation just north of the location which is down in here uh, about 24 knot sustained winds out of this area remember in the tropics 
You don't really see these strong of winds all too often, but it really does kind of confirm up the circulation in a little bit of a sense here because this is showing a southeasterly wind that would really match up with that counterclockwise rotation going around the storm system. So just another one of the tools we often use out here in uh, tropical meteorology. If you were lucky enough to get a ship observation, they're rather quite useful. And here is a Pegasus warning on this system, though I am showing it here real quick. They are a little bit farther north than what the models are showing and also what JMA is showing in. They're kind of following some of the lower level systems. Maybe they believe that the rainy season front might pick this up a lot quicker than what is expected. So definitely want to continue to watch what they're putting out as well as JMA here in the coming days. I'll always remind you that we are an official forecasting agency by any means. Just trying to provide you some information to make decisions. Definitely not any life-threatening decisions. But as we zoom in on this satellite imagery, you can kind of get a clear indication of that circulation. So with that said, where this storm is currently going, if it does push off here just along the northern portions of Luzon. My thoughts on the track should be rain about here, then pushing off here uh, towards the northwest. Those are just my thoughts. But if it does take this exact track, that southwest monsoon definitely is going to be creating the risk of flash floods here in central Philippines, but also towards the north. As this starts to push off here, it's going to have that wraparound effect, including Manila. You're not going to be out of the woods from this system. Urban flooding is going to be a big risk. Also, the risk of landslides will be out here in the mountains right around the central Luzon here, especially on some of these steeper slopes. So something to continue to watch. And then as it does push off towards the north, the rainy season stationary boundary, which has been continuing to affect central China actually in the past 24 hours in Hunan province, you saw reports upwards of about 250 millimeters of rain. So if this tropical system does decide it wants to run into this direction off towards the north, that definitely could exasperate the situation out here across much of China. But you do have that flow basically coming in from the south, so it likely would then move north get wrapped up with that rainy season boundary and could possibly bring yet more rainfall here in central and southern China. Also over here towards Japan, actually, in the past 24 hours, there has been some reports of ports of 359 millimeters of rainfall there in Kyushu, definitely adding on top of the floods you have already been seeing here. If you remember last week, they had our true tropical systems that moved through, plus the rainy season boundary. So definitely it is continuing to create a hazardous situation there, even off towards Tokyo on your third Thursday, you could be seeing some rainfall as that boundary starts to move off towards the northeast. And also, if you see a little bit of a bend here in that stationary boundary, that's a new low pressure area that's starting to slowly develop. Actually, you can see kind of that cyclonic circulation pushing around on the wind barbs right here and then down here. Now, just north of this boundary, though, over much of Korea, North Korea, and South Korea alike, there has been an absolutely devastating drought. Actually, about one of the worst droughts in nearly 100 years out here, ever since records first began in the Korean Peninsula. So please do check in with our most recent article we actually just put out on this phenomenon occurring across much of the Korean Peninsula. But at least the good news is boundary here just towards the south. It is expected to start to lift off towards the north as this uh, front starts to lift with it. Right now that high pressure is dominating. But with that said, this could start to bring some much much needed precipitation across the Korean Peninsula going into the week and that would be very welcome as the crops are already high at risk for being completely damaged out here across much of this region. But uh, we will continue to keep you updated though as far as the tropics as well going into the coming days. That's all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here on WesternPacificWeather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, as always, please post them in the comment box below. Also, I'm reminding you that you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Also, follow our website on Facebook and Twitter as well at Westpac Weather or Western Pacific Weather. So, uh, thanks again for watching, though. Please stay safe out there.